Hi everyone, it's Monica here, also known as Zen, and welcome to another episode of Zen Station. So if you are listening, you are on my regular podcast, but today's episode is a little bit special. I am recording a visual for this and it's on YouTube. So if you're here on YouTube, hi, you can see my lovely face. Um, I've been wanting to do this for a while and I thought, why not now? So here we are. And to be honest, I'm kind of nervous. Although I'm fine in front of the camera, but for a, for whatever purpose, I'm like shy right now. But we're here. <laughs> so in today's episode, uh, we're going to be talking about my healing with sexuality and my experiences with um, sex, sensuality, um, how that's developed through time and change, um, how I view intimacy and how that's different, abuse, trauma, and healing. And just in general, um, my journey to sensual, sexual sovereignty. So I hope you enjoy and I hope that this sheds some light or um, it helps you in a positive way just hearing my story or just having me share this on a platform where you can feel safe to talk about your experiences as well. So with that being said, um, yeah, enjoy. So, okay, let's go back to how it all kind of got started and my experiences growing up as a young woman, young girl, um, and how I treated my body, myself, how I viewed it, and how that's developed. So when I was younger, a little, little, little kid, um, I guess my experience with sensuality, sexuality, um, really developed early. I'm not sure at what point it did, but all I know was it was very taboo and really, um, mm, uncommon for anyone in the household or even in school to talk about it. In school, the way that we learned was through like health class and all they really do is talk about the anatomy, not even thoroughly. I, it's, I don't know how it is now, but it was outdated. It still is, but I am very happy of how much more um, it's being talked about with the anatomy, sensuality, sexuality, sex, healthy sex, healthy relationships with um, partners, intimate partners, um, and especially with yourself. So on that part, I like, I'm very happy about. And also, it makes me feel more safe or open to share my experiences. And hopefully, that creates like a ripple effect and domino effect for you as well. So yeah, in school, yeah, they really just taught the basics of basics and it wasn't even like at least for me personally I didn't feel safe to ask questions or open up about my experience or like curiosity it almost felt like um it was sinful and that is <laughs> um on the religious side and and it it was like especially for women to bring it up or little girls um, that are curious, it's like, no, you shouldn't even think about that or talk about that. Um, and uh, at home, my experience, it was almost shy. It was shied away. We wouldn't bring it up. Our parents wouldn't bring it up. And the only time they would bring it up would be like, don't get in. Don't have sex. Um, use a condom. Uh, don't get pregnant. This is what happens if you get pregnant. Look at this. These, uh, these people who got pregnant, they have a horrible time, it's hard, and it was just like instilling fear and not really educating. And like, don't get me wrong, I love my parents, I love my family so much, but I feel like there wasn't a space to openly communicate about it. For me to learn about it is through porn and I feel like it's the same thing for a lot of other young um, people who experience their first kind of sensual sexual acts was learning through porn and 
I remember watching in middle school um, and it was something like the other kids would just talk about and secretly watch at the during recess I don't know um, and it instilled a kind of image of how love and sex was supposed to look like and it wasn't positive like I'm sure you've watched some porn and the way that it's created is really is fake it's not real it's acting it looks a certain way it sounds a certain way it's not I didn't find intimacy in it and I didn't even know what that meant and being at home at the time growing up I felt like personally this is what I remember and I feel like my subconscious is still trying to protect me from remembering um, certain memories even though I might remember it's just like all fuzzy and the feeling I felt was just kind of foggy and icky and dim and just like like something was missing and it, it felt like it was painful I just had a mental block just there <laughs> yeah so porn was just an act I didn't learn intimacy from it yet and again I didn't know where to find it um, at home it wasn't really there between my parents and I quickly learned that adults whether it was my parents or the other adults I knew teachers I realized they're human as much as me and they don't have all the answers like you can really I was talking to Kedre about this yesterday and um we both had a similar experience quite different but similar in the f fact that school wasn't enjoyable um at least in high school or just maybe throughout um at least for me high school was not my favorite time and I didn't feel safe at home I didn't feel safe at school from my peers from teachers and you can really see with the adults and the teachers the inner child not the playful side maybe but I'm talking about the traumatic um, unhealed child within the adult that was um, just pouring out their pain and their trauma um, onto the kids that they were teaching and when you think of a teacher you think of like an authority that is supposed to educate and supposed to provide a safe space for you but um, there's a lot of them that really did the total opposite and I hated school so much um, and on that topic like again the ideas of how you're supposed to go about your sensuality your energy just you um and how you carry yourself is supposed to be a certain way for example like um there was this teacher i'm not gonna say who i'm sure she's not watching this but like um there's a specific teacher that she was very bitter she was very resentful hateful and that's all she knew and um the way she would do it specifically was by ridiculing young girls on how they were dressing how they're they were behaving and basically deeming them as sluts like slut shaming body shaming and i remember the stupid rules of just not being able to wear like if i wore this oh, i'll be having i'll be getting shit right now <laughs> they're like where do you think you're going to a rave um does your mom know you're dressed like this that's slutty um that's shameful and those things hearing those things uh, one from an authority figure that you feel like is supposed to offer you that safe space um was just like tearing me apart and i'm sure like other young girls this happens to a lot of young girls a lot of women now that carry it with themselves till this day and um i started shedding and uh partaking in my healing journey um during high school and i didn't even know it 
I was on my, I'm on my healing journey for about five years now, and only this year, or 2020, I realized that I am doing what I'm doing to heal unresolved trauma, and um, so I can live a happier life, and also with taking care of myself, I'm able to offer more, uh, more abundance for the people that I love around me. And I love to, I love hearing it and saying it, but like, you can only meet people as far as they've met themselves. And healing can be really subtle, but those little efforts that you do to work towards bettering yourself and healing and doing the shadow work, the deep and nitty gritty painful work... (laughs) It's going to show in the relationship you develop with yourself, your confidence, in an array of things. And I'm going to talk about that, especially and specifically in my healing for my sexuality, my sensuality, um, and how I carry myself. But it's going to show up how you present yourself, the way you love yourself, And it's going to show up in the way that you communicate with others and the people that you bring in and attract. So yeah, during school, um, I'm totally skipping middle school. Let's go back there. (laughs) It's kind of fuzzy. A lot of things are fuzzy for me again. But middle school, it was a lot about exploring a lot of things. And I um, started partaking in um, sexual acts and like just like sex we're adults here so and this whole topic is about sex and sensuality so (laughs) yeah but um i started partaking in it at 14 going on to 15 so that's a that's um uh, at the end of middle school going into high school and i felt like that was really early um but that was my experience and the experience wasn't bad it was just i learned a lot from it And there was a lot of unhealthy, toxic traits within myself and how I navigated the world, navigated relationships, and I didn't know what boundaries were. I didn't know um, when to say or if I even can say no or I didn't know consent. Um, And this goes both ways with uh, me and then my partner, so... It's just a whole learning experience and that I wish I had an authority figure that I could look up to, even though there were people around me that could have been, I just didn't feel like I had that. And um, that's not on them. So eventually in high school, I don't know, something I knew, I always knew something was missing and I felt like I wanted to be happy. That's really it. I just want to be happy where um, when I was in a space of pain uh, consistently. And my experiences are definitely different from your experiences or other people's, but this is mine. And it was still painful for me to go through that made me really flip the switch on how I continued on into my relationship with myself, the world, people, and intimate partners. But going on to high school, I ended up being in a relationship with the same partner for the rest of high school. And he was great. He's still a great guy. Like, I don't talk to him now, here and there. But, like, if you're watching this, no, like, there's no hate or shame um towards you it's just I want to talk about the experience and in my perspective and how that's related to my healing journey because it's definitely a huge pinpoint of how it got started and flipping the switch along with other relationships I had throughout my um early adulthood or teenage years and until now so throughout high school um The only places I did feel safe was in that relationship, but even within the relationship, there were were times where I didn't feel like I could speak up 
or I felt like I was shamed or shunned down, um, not to be a certain way, wear certain things, and consistently I was being told by different figures, people around the same age, other girls, adult figures, and social media in general of like how you're supposed to be. So I really wish if I told my younger self um, something, um, it would be like live in your full expression, be playful, be confident, you're gonna be fine. Listen to yourself and trust yourself because no other words from anyone else will matter as much as yours. That's all I would want to tell my younger self because she knew what was going on. She knew she just wasn't strong enough um, or she just needed that little push, little push of like, hey, you're going to be fine without XYZ. You're going to be fine on your own. And I feel like being in that relationship for such a long time um, happened because I had some, I had a <laughs> period of time where I reflected um, for months on what I needed to heal and what that thing was holding me back from. And I realized it was my relationship with my parents and my father and how that affected my relationships going into intimate partners. And because I lacked, or I, like I felt like I lacked love and intimacy from places where I feel like I should have had, um, I seek that from other people and relationships, so intimate partners specifically, um, to validate my worth. And it almost felt like just staying in that relationship, even though I feel like we both knew it wasn't going well or we would have been better by ourselves, whatever the case, we still stayed because of one, um, familiarity and um, two, just like, it's really just familiarity. I feel like even though there were things coming up and it was like breakup, get back together, break up, get back together. We still stayed together um, for that, for that comfort, even though it was uncomfortable a lot of times. And it was a whole roller coaster of just emotional turmoil <laughs> for the both of us, I'm sure. I can only really speak from my perspective, but um, as a young teenager developing into adulthood, I felt so much shame, so much insecurity, and I didn't feel like me. So I was trying to find something for myself. And during grade 11, I think, I started to really get back into art. I found art to help with my healing journey and to begin my healing journey. So the way I saw it was, it was something to be passionate about. It was something that I can focus on that I loved and was mine. And whenever I would create or draw or paint, it was like new, fun, and a way for me to express myself that was, it had no limits. It had no limits and there was no judgment. And I, even if people judge, I didn't care. I'm having fun. So I love the way the paints moved, how colors blended, how colors represented my feelings at the time, how chaotic it could be, and it just was a vomit of everything that was like just kind of being held inside and just got bleh. <laughs> That's how I still feel like with my art, but it is still, it is more um, intentional my art whereas before it was just all for the purpose of therapy um <laughs> and yeah so grade 11 was when i started to get into my art my craft and at the same time because it was healing for me um that is when i started my healing journey and um 
I was unhappy with where I was like it was unsafe at home I didn't have a I didn't have a safe space at home at school was also worse um my partner I didn't feel safe the only friends I had was his friend group um the old friends I did have turned their back on me and it just felt like a lot of betrayal and pain and hurt that I still haven't fully let go of or I've let go of but it still hurts where to the point where like I don't feel the need to bring in those relationships back if they were to come if it were to happen organically which I feel like all relationships should happen then okay and you know what's funny even until now my mom my parents still don't know like I feel like a lot about me or the things I've experienced just because I've never really brought it up like one day my mom was like oh you always skipped school you're always late I was so mad at you at the time and I was like mom I hated high school I didn't want to be there um and like there's these girls that were like hurting me I just didn't want to be there the teacher sucked I just hated school and she was like what why didn't you tell me I'm like I didn't feel like I could tell you but as much as these conversations are hard to talk about talking about it now is part of my healing and way of just communicating so i i'm much better at communicating this to a bunch of strangers and audience online and to my partner and friends than with my family so that is something that i'm still you know going towards taking step by step and um it's real so yeah i love them though i love them so much so much I'm just taking a mental pause. And you know, throughout your teenage years, no one really knows any better. And I understand that. But the thing that also started me on my healing journey was the pain that was instilled into me. And I didn't want to instill that into others. I wanted to lead with love not hate i didn't want to add more pain to other people's lives because the thing that's most common within us all is we go through our own experiences of trauma whether it's extreme or not we all grow up to feel the weight of the world that we didn't ask for sometimes and that's the part that's the purpose and that's the journey but it isn't the only thing about life to life you know i wanted to live happily i wanted to change the way i saw things people so i can be at peace with what is and be okay with it and from there it was a slow progress but I started since then to get to where I am now so I get a lot of questions on like how are you so confident how are you you know so far into your healing at such a young age I am young I would love to forever be young and I am forever gonna be young inside playful and youthful But um, I did realize at a younger age that I wanted to change the way I navigated. And I wanted to build healthy relationships that were lasting, that were real. And I just want to be surrounded by love. Though I understand there's pain in life. I don't mean to run away from pain. I actually did the opposite. So I, instead of running away from my emotions and the pain, the experiences I've had, instead I observed 
I felt it all through my body as an observer. And um, a really great way, actually, the main way I did it was through painting or creating. Um, The second was through writing, journaling. I did that a lot. And I feel like journaling as well as creating art was just a safe space for me to explore those emotions and feelings, memories, without the need of having another person that at the time I didn't feel like I had or I just feel like I wasn't ready to explore it with someone. So instead I took it to my own accountability and started journaling and really working on myself. So to tell you specifically on what I did, um, I'm not too sure, like, well, one, journaling, um, asking myself questions, taking the time to be patient before responding to things and reacting to things. I would go into like a hermit mode and self-reflect. Um, and um, a lot of times it was during a point where I felt like so betrayed by everyone that no one was on my side. And especially when it had to do with um, my sexuality and what I was doing, things that are personal that are none of people's business. But when you're a kid, even even now as adults, when again, like when you don't resolve the things that are hindering you, um, it shows. <laughs> so I don't gossip anymore. I don't nudge my nose into other people's businesses that I have no part in until people ask or for help or whatever it is. And specifically in my sensual, my sensuality and how I um, present myself. So for some reason, people have a problem when you take up space. And that's another thing I've learned throughout my journey is that it's fine, it's okay, it's good to take up space, to be playful, to move, to explore yourself in your most highest and fullest expression possible. Like, we're here to live in a full life. Um... And that is my goal for 2021, is to really live in my highest, playful, sensual self possible. So, it took me, it took me a long time to get here. And it's still a journey. You're always learning. It doesn't end, and that's the beautiful part about it. And I'm even more grateful to have a partner and people I love to be part of it and to support me as well so (laughs) but yeah like during the time of uh, when I was a teenager it was a lot of pointing fingers at aside from my experience it was always pointing fingers at the girl of she's a slut how could she do that Um, why was she dressed like that she slept with how many guys although the same thing might happen with a guy but no one talks about it. It's almost praise. And especially when you're a victim of something, no one's going to listen to you. Um, this is a whole nother topic on victims and abuse. So I've had conversations on abuse a lot recently. Uh, and it's happening a lot with women. It's been a reoccurring uh, experience and... By talking about it, I really do hope that um, it's something you focus more on, like trying to find the traits early on of abuse and not settling with it. So my experiences on abuse is a lot of um, emotional abuse, verbal abuse, and that is with myself how I talk to myself, my self-talk. It was like, you're, you're not good enough. You're unworthy. 
you're, you'd be lucky if someone were to want you, to need you. So all of these insecurities and negative self-talk made me stay in relationships that were not positive, that were toxic. Um, and that was my fault. That was my fault during the time that it's happened. And I, at the same time, like, I'm very happy it happened because otherwise I wouldn't have, I wouldn't be where I am today. And I am just even more like, oh, it sounds so weird. Like, I'm happy nothing really traumatic happened. I've gotten uh, sexually harassed many times at a young age and again at the time I didn't know how to say no I didn't know how to bring it up and actually I remember one time this guy would constantly harass me and we were classmates and he thought it was okay um to do these things for some reason and one day I was just tired after school and I put him in a chokehold I went like don't fucking do that ever again. I'm not having it today. And he got, I actually put him in a choco. And he never did it again. Good. (laughs) Again, like, guys, men, boys, please. Consent is real. Just because she's there, she's wearing something specific that's showing off her skin, or maybe she started, like, whatever it is, consent, consent, consent you know, you're not obligated or inclined to have her. And the things you do, the actions you do will affect that person traumatically for the rest of their life. So really think hard about what you're doing. And it it didn't happen to me so uh, traumatically, but I know a lot of women, friends of my own um, online that it's happened to and It's just heartbreaking. I remember when I was younger, I couldn't wait to get, like, my boobs, my butt, and get pretty and popular and get attention from all the boys and girls. Until I did. Until I got popular. Um, Everything was focused on looks. On how big her butt was, her boobs, and that, growing up with that kind of mentality and space, like, I'm only valued for my body, um, didn't feel good, and it, it, it totally changed from a space of, like, who's Monica to, oh, Monica turned hot, and I feel like there's still stages of it, hap- like, of it happening when I was younger to, like, after I got, when I became an adult, um, and I know there's people from my school that are still watching and supporting, and if you are supporting, like, thank you, and if you're just watching to watch and creeping and judging and being a hate, haters, then you're still watching, so don't forget to like this video or like this podcast, you can share it, (laughs) and as I got older, after high school, again, let's bring up the relationship I had. So I got out of that relationship because I knew I wanted change. Like, that was the time where I was like, fuck yes, I am leaving this school. And like, to be honest, I didn't hate everything about it. Like, I was positive, I was optimistic, I liked the experiences. Um, I loved a certain class. We had like an outdoor ed class. I loved, it was really fun. Um, I loved the cooking classes and that's when I discovered art. Did my first mural. Um, But for the most part, I hated it. (laughs) And I really just want a uh, clean state. Clean slate. I wanted to start over and that's what I got. So leaving high school leaving the relationship. The relationship, um, at the time, it, I had some resistance for his own reasons, for wanting to stay together. I was like, no, I'm not having it. I need to have my own time. And, and my main 
focus was wanting my own time for myself to heal, grow, get to know myself, create myself, and have fun in university. And the funny thing is, I didn't even want to go to university. I just did it to please my parents. Um, But it didn't last long. I stayed for not even a full year. And it was mostly skipping classes again, paying the tuition, but meeting amazing friends that I love to this day. Um, And uh, as much as I wanted my own time for myself without a relationship and attaching myself to another person it happened (laughs) and it was a great relationship that lasted another i think four years um we're still great friends to this day that that relationship developed into so many different things um that like i hold that relationship close to my heart um no matter what space we're in it's like i love him I love our experiences and I care for him, his friends, his family, and things like that. So, but I wanted to go into a little bit about that relationship and how that's kind of been another experience. (laughs) Let's just say that. Like, through that whole experience, a lot happened um, for me to realize. I've just been getting into relationship after relationship really quickly, even though my focus was always, I want me time. Um, So the best times I've developed, I feel like, or the most I felt like myself was when I was by myself for a small period of time. And um, I feel like the reason I kept going into relationships was because I didn't want to feel alone, even though I wasn't. And that was just part of my healing journey that I had to understand by going through that. So attaching myself to relationships, I almost kind of um, uh, relied on their source of power, source of um, everything to lean on rather than leaning on myself. And I... The healing that I needed to do alone, I felt like I needed someone to be there with me to do. And after getting to relationships, I found those traits, those toxic traits about myself that I kept going on repeat with in relationships kept happening because even though it's a different face, a different person I'm going into relationship with, it was the same cycles that was happening. And until my... Mm, one two three until like my fourth real relationships I've learned that (laughs) so in this new relationship I had a lot of things I didn't have in the previous one which was something that mm, also pulled me in I felt it was new it was exciting for one um I was able to express myself more fully, um, communicate more. But of course, as time goes on, um, there's problems, I guess, resolved. But the unhealed parts about myself was also reflective in my partner as well that had to work on his healing. So there was a lot of conflict that wasn't getting resolved because it wasn't targeting the core and until I got out of that relationship there was a clarity every time there's something to be learned there's a lesson there's more clarity and if anything out of all the relationships I just got more clarity after another and I'm so grateful but I remember in the middle of these relationships I had one encounter where I really felt so shameful and icky again um because again like the same kind of scenarios would come up about people always have an opinion about what you're doing especially when it has to do with your body like it's my body and I realized after talking with Kedri again <laughs> love him <laughs> 
I'm going to talk about him. <laughs> um, is the loudest voices are going to be the most negative ones. Whether that's in your own head, whether it's the people around you, strangers, whatever, online. The loudest voices are going to be the negative ones. Because the other ones that do care or don't care aren't going to say anything. They mind their business. So a lot of things I heard, whether it was directly or indirectly, is why are you presenting yourself like that? Like um, the time where I started doing modeling, it was a really fun and creative way, another creative way for me to express myself and specifically in my sensuality and healing that those parts about myself that like there's a lot of things I didn't love about my body um, that I do now and by doing those... Uh, experimenting with modeling especially nude and boudoir it was healing for me it was a way for me to explore my body more see how um what feels good in the way i move and present myself so it was a confidence booster and at the time i was still insecure about presenting myself in this way and though i would still still do it and share that part of my life I still felt a huge insecurity of judgment from other people and I felt like I had to explain myself of why I'm doing it, what it's for, the purpose, and addressing hate messages that just weren't needed, you know? And the thing that I heard a lot was it would be hurtful intentionally and unintentionally where it was like, hey, um, yeah, some of my friends had to unfollow you or they came up to me uncomfortable because uh, they're seeing your photos of you naked or nude or half, it's not, it's like boudoir. And like a little titty and ass isn't hurting anyone. If anything, it makes you feel calm and relaxed. (laughs) So just look at the picture, look at the damn picture and enjoy it. But... (laughs) I would get a lot of messages and just or just a feedback about it like yeah they feel uncomfortable uh they had to unfollow you or they they're on a whim of unfollowing you and in my head I'm like am I doing something wrong is this wrong um and I had an inner conflict just because again I wasn't confident in the way I was moving but when it changed when I started to become confident and that took this was like maybe three years ago um it took until now to really be confident in uh the way i navigate and express myself because it's just the way i am whether you like it or not you can unfollow you can not communicate with me or interact with me it's fine i understand Um, I just ask for you to keep your opinions to yourself. If you don't, I'm not going to address it. If it's actually helpful, I, you know, I analyze it and I think about it. But when it comes to things like my body and how I express myself, mind your business. And I realize it just shows the way people react and see you is a reflection of their own insecurities and things that they have to work on themselves it's not always the case most of the case it is and these things happen because they don't want to address the things they need to work on because it's easier to keep pushing away keep running away from those trauma those healing the the unhealed work that they need to do Um, and sometimes even just my light or your light or other people's light will trigger people that haven't gone through that or don't want to. So it's not, in that case, when I recognize that that is what's happening, I'm like, okay, it's not me, it's you. It's your own kind of thing that you have to work on. So I'm good here. The whole thing about um, opinions on how I express myself always comes up. So when I started modeling, that would come up. 
as much as people would love or hate it, it gained the most interactions and eyes because people still like to watch your shit even though they don't like it or if they do. So thanks for the engagement and in and you know. And now I am back to exploring modeling. Um, I've been... Okay, so if you don't know, after that relationship and another one, um, I am now in the most healthiest relationship I've ever been in and I can say that confidently because I have, I am in a further space of my own healing and I know myself more now for my relationship partnership I have now for it to be strong because we have open communication all the time. We both focus on our own healing, um, our own growth, our own desires, and we just kind of come together as two holes to help lift each other up. And it wouldn't have happened if uh, he didn't give me the space or if I didn't give him the space to explore, uh, if we didn't communicate, if we didn't take our time to make it organic, nothing was forced. If any of that wasn't there, it wouldn't have been as strong as it is now. And I can't imagine a life without meeting him. So like, I love you. If you're watching, I know you're watching. Um, and this is, um, this is Kedri actually. So I talk about him a lot and he's always in my podcast. Um, yeah, so I would love to do another episode with him uh, on camera so you get to see us talk and the facial expressions I have when he does something weird and I cringe because it happens a lot or when <laughs> yeah but like it'll be fun it'll be fun but anyways I also wanted to talk about like an, ex an experience I had as an adult of not knowing my boundaries not knowing how to set boundaries and knowing my worth really put me in a, a spaces where was shut down more and um I didn't know any better uh and it still kind of makes me feel icky thinking about it not shameful anymore because I understand that it, it wasn't my fault um there wasn't anything I could do at the time with how I was feeling to make it not happen but I wanted to address this experience I had that was a sec sexual assault um, and it was the experience that I went on a date with this guy. I felt really lonely at the time that any type of um, affection or attention I could get, I would, I would um, feed into it and I was just trying to have fun. I don't know. That is it wrong but it brought me to a space where I was somewhere I didn't want to be I was put in a spot pinned down I didn't want to be in I told him no I was crying about my pain with a relationship I just broke off and for some reason he took my no as it's okay I have I got you I'll help you by inserting my penis in you that I didn't ask for and yeah it was not great um it hurt because of like I was not into it I stopped him after a while and um it was I don't know I stopped talking to him after that experience and I blocked him after he kept like messaging me of like saying I'm sorry or I just want to hang out I, and he kept asking to go on dates and stuff I'm like no 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 and I forgot there's one experience that just uh, made me flip out he was trying to turn what was he saying he was trying to turn it on to me like by not replying he's like oh I just want to have your attention or he said he said something really narcissistic that got me so upset and I was like I don't 
require to give you my attention. You keep asking for it. I don't want to give it to you. And he was like, um, oh, I just did that to get your attention. I was like, what the fuck? That's not okay. So I blocked him and then he tried messaging me on text and I blocked him on that. Like, dude, come on, man. Guys, consent, read the room, just leave the girl alone if she said no. That's no, that's no bueno. And the thing with abusers, not to say he is an abuser, I don't know, but sexual predators, abusers have certain qualities within them that are very lovable and they are smarter than we give it to them. When we think of abusers, we think of, you know, like wife beaters, wearing a wife beater with like a bottle of henny on his right hand or something. And for an abuser to be an abuser, you have to see physical evidence of abuse or bruises, but abusers can come in pretty packages of uh, like the popular guy in school, the popular guy at work, or he's well off, he's well loved, and you think of him like he would never do that. But those are the specific types of abusers that are most common um, that you won't recognize until you listen to the victim, ask your friends, the people around you, how they're doing with relationships. And when you're in that relationship, don't be afraid to bring it up with people that you love and you trust. Just to, you know, if you don't, then how are you going to know whether or not it's toxic? Like when we're in a toxic relationship with someone that's abusive, we don't recognize these qualities um, until someone else from a third party sees it and tells you, this is not healthy. And even though you might know it, you're in a space of knowing, I feel like the first step is to recognize these qualities and get out um, because it's very complicated and has so many layers within every type of relationship of a toxic relationship or abuse that when you're in it, it's like a slow boil. Like when you put a frog in boiling water, it's going to jump out. It's going to be like, oh, that's hot. That's, I don't like that. But when you put the frog in cool water and slowly turn on the heat, the frog's going to die. I recently heard that example from Twix, the singer Twix, and her relationship with Shia LaBeouf. And um, she made that example of how that's how she felt in her relationship, that he was abusive. It felt like she was boiling up to death. And that really happens in abusive relationships. Um, It doesn't just come like he's abusive. You're not going to stay if you see it right away, but it starts with a slow boil usually. And it's like, one day the abuser would be super kind and you're living like a princess and another day he goes into his toxic habits again and you get so used to that cycle of receiving pain that being in that relationship is normal for you even though you know it's abusive and i feel like a lot of women um go through the same thing maybe on different levels or extremes, but for me personally, I understand that feeling of um, getting so used to someone, uh, even though you know it's toxic, and making excuses for them, thinking for them, thinking as them, and always blaming yourself or getting blamed. Like, it's, it's not a good feeling, and I only know this from getting out of relationships that were like that um to see that it was toxic that um in order for us to heal is to separate and the thing about it is like when you break up with someone people will be like wow you guys are so good together perfect but especially on social media you don't know the truth that is just the truth that people want to put out and it could be a whole new fake life. Um, you don't see 
what's actually happening in people's lives and relationships so it doesn't look pretty all the time that's all i wanted to say i'm gonna drink some of this this is a mandarin cup <laughs> now fast forwarding to where i am now i realized a lot more a lot more clarity and i feel like i'm in the best space i've ever been um with my relationship with myself uh, my family my friends my intimate partner um just relationships overall there is so much more expansion and growth and space to play and take up and explore that i have never felt like before and it's really like nothing really changed i feel like physically in my life i'm still in the same house um you know like nothing financially really it's just i feel like there's more freedom and it happened because of the way I changed how I saw things. Um, I took a lot of risks. And with that, there's no more opportunity for me to explore many, many different things. And I took those opportunities to explore them. Um, and so with this mental freedom and physical freedom, you know, like we our reality is shaped by the way we navigate the world and how we see the world the way i've changed my perception is you know it's always the same kind of um reminders lessons i've learned was you know there are things you can control there are other things you can't the things you can control are how you perceive how you react how you experience um, relationships and just things, um, how much love you can give, what you instill to people. And, you know, I just want it to be something positive all the time and talk about the things that are hard to talk about. And it's, I say these things out loud for myself but also for anyone that wants to listen, that hears me, that, you know, sees this as a source of inspiration or um, strength, then I'm happy. So, yeah. But so many lessons I've learned. I've learned about boundaries. I've learned more about myself, of what I need in intimacy and in relationships, my needs of having a healthy relationship like there nothing there's no specific things i would say no to like it's like a what is what are the things like my absolute no's in a relationship like that doesn't exist because you never know how you never know what you're gonna need or not need in a relationship because everyone is unique and different depending on the situation and the time so it's always going to adapt and mold into whatever it needs to be at that time and there are certain qualities and things that i follow and i subscribe to that if they were the opposite of something i don't subscribe to at all it's just a absolute no to you know interacting with a person i don't want to invite that um and that's my choice. Those are my boundaries I've set for myself to protect my energy, to protect my space. Because I've changed my view on intimacy as something sacred, my relationships, friendships as something sacred, my passions, my career, my time as something sacred. I hold a lot of intentions of what I do and uh, what I want to have around so I feel like that's a huge thing that's been um, a great lesson over and over but has been really predominant or dominant um, in last year and this year 
you know, life is sacred, it's short, and it's meant to be lived in your fullest expression with the people you love. There's nothing that you can't do. You know, there, it takes steps, it takes work, it takes tears and pain, but it's rewarding. You know, it's kind of like, what type of pain are you willing to endure to get to a space that you'd like, you know? And I learned that from a really close friend of mine. A lot of wisdom from him. I'm very um, grateful for him. <laughs> I'm very grateful for a lot of people in my life that um, I always tell them I love them. But I feel like it's a time to... Uh, remind them of that (laughs) and of their power because like uh, people you have no idea how much power you actually hold or if you do great I'm so happy for you because you do and I feel like now how I see the world is aside from being spiritual uh and voodoo-y kind of things aside from all of that and how you view spirituality and energy i personally feel like we've been put on i feel like as children we have the highest amount of spirit or vibration and understanding that we kind of forget when we get older because when we get older the weight of the world goes on our shoulders we lose our passions we forget it's much easier to. Um, we go through pain. We go through our experiences. We do. That when we're older, we forget our purpose. We forget why we're here. And I really think that our purpose, for one, is to live that this human experience in all its glory and all its pain and all its everything. And to remember why we're here. To... Do the things that fuel your passions, that um, are of service to other people, are of service to yourself. You know, it could be something little that still impacts a large group of people. It could be on a mass scale, but everyone is here for a reason. And I feel like the last year and this year, I've been really exploring and navigating my purpose, my why, my reason, and living in my purpose, always. And by living in my purpose is to be who I am, to fully express myself and be playful, to love, to share my insight when I learn new things, hopefully for anyone that's going through the same path similar things um to instill some wisdom or support when it's needed (laughs) and i found that specifically i've been doing this through you know talking to you guys by exploring my craft with my art um and being in my truth i know i'm saying words but i hope that you're taking this in and it's hitting somewhere that you need to hear. Otherwise, I'm saying this all for myself as well. <laughs> I actually had a question. Um, what was it? Let's see. So I had this question on my Instagram poll and it says, what did you learn through intimacy? So I I went through my experiences in the past when I was younger uh, until now, but to sum it up of what I learned in intimacy is that now it's sacred, um, it's something to be explored, it's something to be celebrated, and it's special, it's sacred, whether you explore it with one person or many people. That... Um, is just the way you express and i learned that intimacy and foreplay for example happens way before the bedroom like 
It can happen a couple days before the bedroom, you know, before sex. And how I see sex is sex is anything that isn't just inserted because that is an old kind of way of looking at sex. But sex is the act of being intimate. Foreplay is more than just giving head. Foreplay could be, you know, embracing your partner, hugging them in the morning, flirting a little bit, um, telling them words of affirmations that you're beautiful, you're loved, giving gifts, touching them, you know, doing something for them that they appreciate. And these are all in the form of the five love languages. Is it five? Hold on. We check. Yeah, it's five love... <laughs> I forgot how many, but um, through the five love languages, that is just one way of uh, understanding how you want to be loved, how your partner wants to be loved, and underst- understanding that is really important and something that I've been exploring a lot the last year. And um, really taking things slow and intimate with my partner has been heightening our experiences sexually and it's amazing you know it's funny um we organically have this experience together that is very playful that's very sensual and we both have a high sex drive but he i feel like heightened mine so much just because i love being loved by him and he loves being loved by me and it happens naturally So we just turn each other on. But I realized after learning about Tantra um, that we were already practicing it. Um, And Tantra is, mm, from what I understand, is the mix between um, sensuality and spirituality together. And it starts more, ooh, 444. It starts more than just sex. It's like, how it's built up your relationship with yourself like i do a lot of self-care practices and rituals now um for you know the intimate intimacy with myself so i practice self-massage i take my time to oil myself um i play i explore and i do the same with my partner um that isn't rushed that isn't like okay, we're here to just do the thing. <laughs> we're just we're not just here to have sex. We're here to embrace each other and love each other. And that might take hours, you know? So exploring that with him has been really fulfilling and invigorating and super fun. I love it. Ooh. And another thing I wanted to add, like in our relationship, Again, it's been the healthiest relationship I've ever had and it can only have happened because of how we've met together and how strong of individuals we were. Um, By coming together, we just become even stronger. And it might sound cheesy, but it's, it's real. And I am incredibly grateful to have such a incredible partner. Um... And for us to come together creatively, he's he's an all artist as well. Um, but aside from being an artist, like he does a lot of healing work, um, talks about it, and shares his platform for other um, people and especially uh, Black creators to feel safe to speak about their own kind of experiences and in relation with art as well. So, like I love I love connecting with him on that aspect. And I could talk hours about it with about him and with him. Um, if you want, and if you haven't already, we have um, a couple episodes together on many different topics. So check it out if you haven't already. Make sure to subscribe. Um, but yeah. Um, 
And I also want to bring up like something that's come up is I started modeling again with Kedre. I completely forgot to talk about this. <laughs> But I started to explore modeling again when Kedri started to explore photography again. So for him, art has always been something healing for him as well. And photography recently has become that source, um, specifically film photography. So as he was exploring that, I became his model for him to just play around and I quickly fell in love with modeling again, especially working with him. It's very comfortable. It's very organic, as everything is. <laughs> and um, I love how much... Oh, and, and, and for one thing, the reason I do nude uh, modeling or boudoir is I feel like the less I wear and the more I'm in just with my body, I feel the most comfortable and loose and playful like i can i explore my body i interact with myself and i'm not distracted by clothing like i I hate clothes to be honest if i can i would just be naked but exploring it with him um opened up a lot new doors of express expressing ourselves Uh, itchy and it also invited both positive and negative comments um so again it all comes down to the insecurities of other people and whether you're conscious of or not before you say something i want you to think about where it's coming from like rather me getting upset about it it's more like why would you share that energy when we have something so positive going on him and I Kedre that instead of saying why would you let your for one it would be like I could never uh, let my girl do that I would feel so uncomfortable and that's fair but I would rather you explore why that makes you uncomfortable in the first place like where is this sense of like where is this sense of ownership coming from it's your ego it's definitely your ego and i just hope that people could shed their ego to understand their insecurities much more um just because we as a partnership are putting something out together and that's what we explore so it wouldn't have happened like before we met each other i was already exploring this and um I'm happy to have a partner that allows me to have that freedom and not only allows me, allows me, (laughs) but actually supports and wants me to explore and pushes me to without any limitations of how or what I'm supposed to do. The thing is he allows, we both allow each other to be our most authentic selves um and talk about it talk about like where we feel uncomfortable why what boundaries can we set um but for the most part we allow ourselves to explore all things um with like a limitation that we've set ourselves as a a partnership we don't we didn't come into the relationship with a set rule of like how people deem monogamous relationships it actually started off as more of an open relationship because before him i was in a an open relationship or you could call it polyamorous but um it quickly turned into a monogamous relationship where i personally am open to polyamory and open relationships depending on the situation and the time and what's needed but sexually i'm still monogamous or i feel like i want monogamy anyways but with our relationship even though it's a monogamous relationship i don't like to really title it as one or the other because it's gonna adapt and change through experiences and what we go through and by openly communicating um it's gonna be much easier to have healthy relationships and you know be on the same page so that's what we have and 
like we have our own issues but it gets resolved quickly because we communicate and we talk about things that are uncomfortable like um for example how would you feel if i were with another partner um and how would you feel if i uh, when i openly explore myself to the public and the thing when we came together he already knew i was doing all this before and supported it so i'm just super grateful and now i have an only fans that he helps me take pictures for and supports me 100 percent so but on my part i make sure that i'm always asking questions like are you okay with this um i just want to make sure you're comfortable if not let's talk about it and yeah since i was a kid to now i've come a long way to my sensual and overall sovereignty of you know allowing myself to shed shame to be comfortable in my own skin be comfortable with my choices um and explore play love in the way that i love to love <laughs> that i need to be loved and um you know it feels good it feels really good i feel like i'm in a great space as much as the anxiety and dark thoughts hit and turmoil comes i am able to conquer and deal with them much better because of how i've develop my relationship with the self and how i navigate problems it's just another thing like i like to say is you know and like kedri is like this too is even if someone deals with something well it doesn't mean they're not going through it and i feel like him and I feel a similar thing that people always see us as someone positive or optimistic or up and, you know, battling through the troubles effortlessly. It looks effortlessly because we know it happens and we deal with it with integrity and strength. And it's a lot of internal work that no one else will see. And um, it might look like a breeze for the outside world. Um, but internally, it's still a fucking roller coaster, fucking tsunami going on, except we just deal with it well. And I feel like this is common with a lot of people who are very in tune with themselves and on their healing journey because it's a lot of work to dig deep all the time and i feel like he always asked me that question like do you feel like you have to constantly reflect and dig deep and be in that space of um how i can be better and things like that and i told him yeah i feel like i'm constantly there i'm always trying to make sure or reflect on if i'm on my path if i'm living in my purpose and it's it's really it can be draining but it's the work that i consciously set out to do so i can come up as my best self for myself and for the people that i love and i'm trying i'm trying my best i'm doing the work and I know a lot of people who are doing the work and are not showing it, who are in the dark doing it. I see you. Good job. <laughs> you know, like, it takes a lot and uh, it's no easy task. So, I applaud you. I applaud you. <laughs> yeah, when I'm closer to the mic, it sounds so good. I should have a closer like right here yeah that's good i should do this all the time haven't used this baby in so long from the 
streaming days. <laughs> but yeah, now this is a really long episode, I feel like, but I love it. And I still feel like there's so much to explore and talk about, but I'll have this as an, a separate episode. Um, let me know if you'd like to hear anything specific. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know down below or in my DMs on Instagram. You can also go on to my anchor page um, and send a voice note to be featured in this episode or the next episode. <laughs> But again, like my DMs are always open to talk, to um, explore, and ask questions. So don't be shy. <laughs> but anyways, thank you so much for listening and watching. If you are on YouTube, don't forget to like this um, podcast video, subscribe, share it, tell me what you think. And also, a little plug. Um... I just launched a new collection of the four goddesses. Um, I've been releasing each goddess kind of slowly. So the next goddess I have up and available as art prints, as wearable wearable artwork, sweatshirts, sweatpants, yoga leggings, things like that. You can check it out on my website at monicavcow.com. Um, I also have... A, all my links on there that you can check out and also a link to my only fans because support your girl if you feel like it shameless plug you'll find me exploring myself to my full potential <laughs> and also don't forget to check out kedre's new collection as well the worldwide trauma series it's two teams of abusers versus healers and it is the practice in breaking bad habits. I absolutely love the work he's been putting out. Like, I am his number one fan as he is my number one fan. <laughs> it's hilarious. But it is the perfect time. Um, I feel like this topic needs to be explored more. And having others share their story, whether you feel comfortable or not that's up to you but um yeah so peace